This week we have a viewer question from the Facebook group. The question comes from viewer Ju Kiafang. I hope I'm pronouncing your name somewhere close. Uh, and he asks for a comment on Romans chapter 2, verse 29, regarding what Paul refers to as the Jew in secret. First, let's set the table. So in the first century church, there was a real struggle to integrate Gentile Christians into a Judaism-based Christianity, right? So Jesus is the Messiah for whom the Jews have waited. Now the new church is uh, begun among Jewish people, and there are Gentiles who are entering into the church. And the question is, are they equals with their Jewish brethren? And they believe so, and Paul seems to believe so, um, but it was tough in those fledgling churches for Jewish believers to not treat Gentile converts uh, like sort of lesser or junior believers or second-class Christians, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So part of this big discussion is the covenant. We're the covenant people and you are not. You're being brought in later, but we have the law, the Torah, we have the, the, uh, the circumcision, we have all this history with God. And so the challenge in the integration is for the Jewish Christians to believe that the Gentile Christians are just as much Christians as they are. Paul comes along and writes to the Romans and says, it's better for a person to be uncircumcised and obey God than to be circumcised and not obey God. Which brings us to our first uh, verse of the day, Romans 2, 27. This is from the ESV. Then he who is physically uncircumcised but keeps the law will condemn you who have the written code and circumcision but break the law. So there's his powerful conclusion. If you're faced with the choice between being circumcised and being disobedient or being obedient and not being circumcised. It's way better to be obedient to God and be uncircumcised in the flesh than it is to be vice versa. Now let's get into his explanation of it, which brings us to our question of the week. And this is Romans 2, 28 and 29 from the ESV again. For no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly, nor is circumcision outward and physical. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. So Paul says if you're boiling Judaism down to circumcision, you need to know that real circumcision is not just about an outward modification of the flesh by men, but by an, about an inward modification of the heart by the spirit. And we're going to take a look at two important things that he, that he does here in Greek. He sets up two double phrases, one about two kinds of Jew and the other about two kinds of circumcision. So let's dig in. And we'll start out with Paul's differentiation between the two kinds of Jew. So, uh, ugar ho en to fanero eudaios uh, estin. So, ugar uh, for not, and then the last word of the phrase estin for is not, and then we get our subject uh, ho eudaios for the Jew is not. Ento fanero uh, in the outward. So that sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? In the outward, outwardly. So uh, a Jew is not a Jew because he's a Jew outwardly, is what he tells us. Phaneros. So to fanero is a dative phrase from phaneros, which either means outward or visible. So that's important, outward or visible. In this case, it's kind of a double entendre because physical circumcision is an outward sign that can be verified vis visually, visibly, right? Let's go on and look at the second half. 
Alho and to crypto Judaios. Uh, Al is the shortened form of Allah. Rather, uh, ho Judaios, the Jew, is uh, en to crypto, inwardly or in the inner, uh, in the hidden part. So we had phaneros, which is outward or visible, and then or and now we have. Crypto, to crypto, which comes from kryptos, like cryptography, secret writing, writing in a code that hides the message, which means either uh, inward or hidden or even secret. So he says, first, a Jew is not a Jew just outwardly. Uh, rather, a Jew is a Jew inwardly or in the hidden part, on the inside part. So if we go back to verse 27, he says it's not about the outward appearance or performance. It's about the inward orientation, the change that's taken place on the inside that isn't uh, spot checkable with the eye, right? That's what he's telling us. Now let's look at the two phrases about circumcision. Ude he entofanero, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Entofanero. And sarki peritome. So neither is, then the subject is the last word, peritome, circumcision, uh, entofonero, uh, outward, and sarki in the flesh. So real circumcision, the circumcision that matters, is not the one that's outward in the flesh that can be seen visibly because it's outward in the flesh. Then the second part, Kaiperitome cardias and pneumati ugramati. Uh, and circumcision is uh, of the heart, cardias is a genitive from cardia, uh, of the heart and pneumati in the spirit, ugramati, not the letter. So just like he says, a Jew is not just a Jew outwardly, visibly, but a, but a Jew is a Jew in his heart, in the hidden parts. Then he says, real circumcision is not what you can verify visually. It's not that outward thing that's done in the flesh by human hands. Rather, that thing that takes place in the heart that's hidden, that can't be verified by the eyeball, and is not done by human hands, but is done by the Spirit. He says, if you're faced with choosing between one set, a Jew who's a Jew outwardly due to a circumcision that is outward by human hands in the flesh, or one who is a Jew inwardly in the hidden places that takes place in the heart, not by human hands, but by the spirit, that's the one you want to go with, with the latter rather than the former. So remember, the issue here is Gentile integration and a sense of superiority based on heritage, on covenant, and on circumcision. And Paul comes along and says, your conspicuous law keeping is not something to just be dismissed, but when you're faced with a choice between outward law keeping and inward change of heart, inward change of heart is more representative of the work that the Spirit is doing in his people, whether Jew or Gentile. Because ultimately, the same writer tells us, in Christ Jesus, there is neither Jew nor Greek, free nor slave, male and female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. He is an advocate for doing away with this tiered system, and he tries to break it down by saying, it's better to be changed in your heart by the Spirit than to be changed in your flesh by human hands. Uh, that'll be the real shower of who is and who isn't uh, in the covenant with God and therefore a Jew. So, uh, Ju Kiafang, our viewer, thank you for your awesome question. I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. And to everyone who has a question in hand that they might like to pose, leave it in the comments of this video or go to the Facebook group, if you even knew there was a Facebook group, and leave a question there, and I'll do my best to get to it. And until we see one another again, Karis Kairene Humine, grace and peace to you.